Hi guys, Dave Wilson here again and today I'm going to be showing you how to refurbish a silver money clip because there's nothing I love more than going around antique markets, auctions and eBay and buying bits of vintage classic designer jewellery, unusual pieces that you just can't get anymore. And if you're looking for things like that, one thing that you're going to come across is that with pre-owned jewellery, quite often a lot of things are engraved. They have names or initials on them. But don't be put off by that, that's actually a good thing. Because what it means is people that are looking to just to buy an instant gift, they're not going to bid on things like this because they don't like it. But for people like you and me, with a little bit of knowledge, it means we can pick up classic vintage pieces of designer jewellery for bargain prices because I'm going to show you how to remove the engraving. And it's dead simple. Follow me. So this is what we're talking about here. This is a Tiffany & Co. Sterling Silver money clip. Uh, not sure how old it is. Uh, I'll be able to look at the hallmark and tell you. So the first thing with any vintage piece of jewellery is to check it out. Is it legitimate? Uh, especially with designer items. So I can see the hallmark down the bottom here. So that reassures me. Um, the engraving, if I look inside the engraving, the engraving is silver. If you look inside the engraving and you see a yellow colour, that could mean that it's been uh, plated and it's not real, so do check that out. Uh, you can also rub the back with some sandpaper and acid test it. Uh, so that looks genuine. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to remove this engraving here, the ray. Now, a couple of things that you have to think about before you remove engraving. So let's take a closer look at it. Now one thing that you need to be aware of is the thickness of the material here because if it's deep then you've got to make sure that you've got enough material thickness here so that you can file some of it away. So here on the bench pin and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to cover up the hallmarks here because I don't want to damage those. Now treat the engraving like you would um, a scratch. So basically what we've got to do is we've got to file it away. But don't be tempted to use a rotary tool and just try to polish that out because what you'll have is you'll get dips. So what you need to do is you need to flatten the whole area. So in this case we've got a bend here and a bend there. So all this area here needs to be flattened down. And you need to take the whole thing down below the level of the engraving. So this is why I said earlier you have to watch out for deep spots at the corners. But this is nice and easy. So what do we use? Well we need something flat. So you can use a flat file. Um, this is a diamond file. I think this is 600. Or I've got some 500 emery paper. Now whether you're using a file or using an emery stick, it's important that you use something that's straight. You don't want to use anything that's curved, you want a nice flat object. So a flat file or a flat emery stick. So just working away there. Now I don't know whether you can see this at your handle, but I can see that starting to cut into the surface now. So it shouldn't take too long. So it's just a case of going over that a few minutes and eventually they will start to fade. So I'll take it to halfway and then I'll give you a look. So join me in a second. Now hopefully you can see that there. In order to speed it up, uh, I just decided to use a little diamond file just to speed it up. And you can see now the Y is still there, the A is half come, but the R is starting to go now. Just a few faint outlines. So I'm just going to carry on with the diamond file there. And literally it's only a couple of strokes. Uh, there you go. I don't know if you can see that on the camera there now, but the R, it was Ray, R-A-Y, so the R is now gone. So I'm just going to carry on moving across with the diamond file, just removing all those letters. So join me in a second. So all the engraving has now gone. Um, not sure if you can see that. And so what I'm doing now is just going over it, just flattening the surface again using the 600 diamond file, just flattening the surface and just making sure that there's no other scratches or tool marks from the filing. So I want a nice, even surface. And again, if there's any little marks, just keep working at them. And always keep the file flat and parallel, avoid digging in. 
So I'm quite happy with that now. So I'm now switching to the 500 Emery. And um, the long strokes on this, that's just going to put a slight sh satin sheen on the surface. So I'll give it a couple of strokes. And again, I can now look at it and I can see I've got a couple of tiny little scratches here. So I'll keep working them with the buff stick. If they won't go, then switch back to the file, file them, and then back to the buff stick. And you keep going back from the buff stick to the file, buff stick to the file, and keep going until you can't see any other marks on it when you buff it. So, just a little bit more work with the buff stick here. So, back in a second. So there we go, that's all the engraving disposed of. And the surface is nice and flat now. Important that it's flat because when you polish it you'll get undulations in it, so make sure it's nice and flat. So, um, the back's not too bad, just a couple of little scratches. So I'm just going to go over it all now again with the 500 Emery buff stick. Right. So the same process basically. Filing, sanding, filing, sanding, just making sure the whole thing is flat until we get rid of all the scratches. So here I've got a little 3M Scotch Bright wheel. So I'm going to get inside the piece here and go all over it to give it a nice satin finish, but very light where the hallmark is here. So by using something like that, I can really get inside the and polish right in those hard to reach areas. So we can now start on the polishing phase. So I'm going to use this Menzerna IP, which you've heard me talk about many, many times before. And because I'm, it's a flat surface, I'm going to start with a hard flat wheel. And we've now got a pretty good mirror finish on it. Uh, there's no more scratches. But before I finish it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop it in the tumbler for an hour. And what that's going to do is that's going to clean and polish all the insides. But it's also going to work hard in it at the back here. So make it nice and springy. So here it is out of the tumbler nice and shiny and springy but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to adjust it with a pair of pliers just to get it lined up before I do the final polish so once again a quick polish over with the felt wheel and the Menzerna IP polish then it's very important to clean it all off so a quick dip in the ultrasonic to clean off all the pre-polish and then with a brand new soft wool mop we're going to polish it all over with the Menzerna SF super finish alternatively you could use triple e and rouge so when we've got it to a nice final high luster it's now time to just dip it in the ultrasonic for one last time to clean off all grease and polish a quick buff up with a silver cloth and there you have it one fully refurbished tiffany and co silver money clip and this is already off in the post to its new owner so i hope you enjoyed that I've been Dave Wilson, thanks for watching and I'll see you real soon with the next project. Bye for now.